Hey everyone! Now available for free, the revised Automotive Materials Collection includes a set of 10 master materials and over 150 instances, giving artists the foundation to add new materials to fit their products. Plus, all materials are now simpler, more organized, more efficient, and, best of all, more fun to use. Download the collection today and try it for yourself! Recently, we welcomed Cubic Motion to the Epic Games family. Cubic Motion has been a longtime Epic partner, integral to notable real-time demonstrations such as the first Hellblade Sinuous Sacrifice live character performance, Meet Mike, and Siren. They are a leading provider of automated performance-driven facial animation technology and services for video games, film, broadcast, and immersive experiences. By joining forces, our teams are solidifying our commitment to advancing the state of the art in the creation of believable digital humans for all Unreal Engine users. For the sound designers in the audience, senior technical sound designer Adam Block wrote up a thorough dev blog on his audio redesign of the Shooter Game Sample Project, where he not only made the soundscape more modern and dynamic, but updated how the sounds were implemented. For a deep dive, head over to the Unreal Engine blog. And once you've finished with your lesson on sound design, check out a piece from Epic's lead audio programmer, Aaron McLaren, on Unreal Engine's split-screen support, originally rolled out for Fortnite Season 11. McLaren describes how split-screen audio works in Unreal, some of the challenges of implementing it, and why, in the case of split-screen audio, your intuition may not always be right. Interactive 3D started in the games industry, but this technology is now being used everywhere. From advertising to manufacturing, architecture, healthcare, film, and more. As more and more employers embrace this technology, the demand for real-time 3D skills is skyrocketing. We'd like to introduce the Creator's Field Guide to Emerging Careers in Interactive 3D, a free roadmap for students and job seekers to help navigate the exciting world of interactive 3D careers and provide guidance on the specific skills and competencies these new roles require. Download the Creator's Field Guide to Careers in Interactive 3D via the Unreal Engine blog. If you're an Android developer, please know that Unreal Engine 425 requires Android Native Development Kit Revision 21 to support the development of Android projects. This requires a new setup process using Android Studio. While new documentation will be published on this process for 425's full release, for those of you trying out the 425 previews, you can check out the new setup steps ahead of time on our blog. You may have seen the Mills work on the human race, previously showcased at GDC in 2017, or perhaps our spotlight on their use of Unreal Engine to puppet the monster for Monster.com's award-winning advertising series called Opportunity Roars. Watch their latest short and a brief behind the scenes to see how they cross the finish line to deliver a piece that seamlessly blends digital and physical reality for Sky's Formula One's 2020 coverage with the help of Sky Creative. And over to our top weekly karma earners, Clockwork Ocean, GeoDVS, Vicherka, Deathray, Ujimo, Foxfire, Nuxit, Grot13, T Sumisaki, and Rumerayaki. Thank you all for your contributions. Our first spotlight this week is a stunning tech demo from Black Amber Digital, specialists in high-end cinematics and games. They wanted to see what was possible with ray tracing for a game that runs in 4K at 60 FPS, and they impressed. If you'd like to stay up to date on Zenobia, formerly Origin Zero, follow them at twitter.com slash Zenobia underscore game. Here you see a beautiful blacksmith setup by Art Attack. They're utilizing Quixel Mega Scans and are also showing off ray tracing techniques. Head over to the forums to share your comments and suggestions. Nice work! The final spotlight is from Daisuke Sakamoto, and they made these Gibson Les Paul guitars sing. Not only did they build a stunning cinematic, they've also created a guitar configurator and virtual showroom using the Oculus Rift S. Again, jump over to the forums and let Daisuke know what you think. All right, thanks for tuning in to this week's news and community spotlight.
Hey everyone and welcome to Inside Unreal, a weekly show where we learn, explore and celebrate everything Unreal. I'm your host Victor Broden and with me today I have Mr. Paulo Souza. Hi. Hi for coming. You are um, our South American uh, evangelist, or one of our South American evangelists, yes. right? There's actually two now. Yes. Yes. Three now. Oh, even, even better. Do <laughs> um, you want to talk a little bit about what you do as an evangelist? Yes. Uh, as evangelists, we uh, travel around the continent, of course, talking to developers, mostly indie developers, but also the ones who are getting to the level where uh, they're going to take the next step, when they're, they're going to release the games. Uh, with Unreal Engine, so and we try to nurture and, 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 and nurture the relationship and help them uh, ship, uh, and basically being a point of contact uh, with those indie developers and also other developers who may be thinking about switching to Unreal. Mm -hmm. So we are able to help them uh, uh, get the, the tools and the information that they need to learn Unreal and get into our our world. That sounds good. Um, I believe there's an email as well that they can use to contact you guys, right? Yes. Uh, you should. Uh, there's an email that I'm not sure right now. I can't remember right now. Indies at Unreal Engine. But yes, you should definitely <laughs> look at our new initiative that we have released last year at Unreal Dev Days. It's called Unreal Indies. So just look for indies. Uh, epic games. Com. You're gonna you're gonna find not only all the information that you need if you're an indie developer that is using Unreal or want to use Unreal, but also uh, all the, the, the ways that you can find to con contact us. Yeah, and maybe in the future even where you might be, because you do go and visit meetups and... Yeah, yes, uh, we usually do, yes, local meetups. Uh, I, I do most of my traveling uh, in Brazil uh, right now. We're gonna, we're gonna have more evangelists to cover the territories in South America. Uh, we also do, whenever we can, Game Jam, so we're going to have Global Game Jam coming. Awesome. Uh, and we're going to have uh, presents, and uh, not every, not all the, the venues, but the, the larger ones in South America. And uh, GDC and, you know, uh, game dev events in general, uh, for sure you definitely find. I mean, we're now hiring more evangelists, we just hired a few more for South America, we're hiring more for Brazil soon. Uh, so, for sure, over the course of the year, uh, there would be absolutely no event that we're not going to be covering. That's okay. at least the goal. That's awesome. Right now. And today we're going to talk, it's a little bit relevant to countries and yeah. you know you being yeah. from South America, we're here to talk about localization. Yeah, uh, localization system is a very powerful feature in Unreal that's uh, in general a little bit overlooked. Mm -hmm. uh, People, most people that, uh, at least some of the people that I talk to, I mean, uh, on my on traveling, talking to developers, they don't know that Unreal comes with a built-in system that can help you uh, localize your game to any languages that you need. Uh, uh, usually, developers think that they need to buy something, uh, some third-party plugin from mm -hmm. the marketplace, or that they need to implement themselves ways to to make their game support multiple languages. And, uh, and but and with Unreal you don't need that. It comes with a very powerful localization system. It covers not only basic text but also assets and sounds, dialogue, and everything. It's very powerful. We've been using that for many years. Uh, and a few engines, few engine versions back, we added the localization dashboard, which makes makes things even easier for you to implement your own localization. Uh, even do even translate the game yourself if you're like small indie developers, but uh, but if you if you're making something that's bigger and you need to maybe hire uh, an external resource to translate your game, uh, the localization dashboard also helps you a lot with that. That's great. Should we take a look at it? Sure. All uh, right. Yeah, we should definitely first start. So for y for you that don't know, this is action RPG. This has been in the stream for. Uh, uh, many times already. Uh, I think that Sam did uh, probably a few streams mm -hmm. talking about action RPG. Uh, so we're going to use action RPG uh, as an example of uh, a very quick localization that we can do. Uh, so action action RPG has you know this RPG kind of RPG look. So it has a lot of text that we can look at. It has a lot of assets and art that we can look at translating and get uh, get this set up for. Uh, localization, right? So uh, let me first go over uh, the localization dashboard, right? You can find this uh, here in window. 
localization dashboard and it will basically open the screen and what it's going to show you first on the left side we need to talk a little bit about uh, game targets right a game target is uh, basically uh, it's a way that you have to separate parts of your game parts of the product that you're making that you can localize right it's mostly used at least internally at epic uh, uh, to separate in between uh, diff not, not different versions but you can do like a localization target for your main game for the game that you're going to release first uh, uh, and then you can do different localization targets for DLC or expansion packs and something like that so just to keep uh, things organized um, in general uh, for every new project, Unreal already creates a localization target called Game. So this comes uh, by default uh, in the engine. So we actually don't need to recreate one, but you can, by clicking here on Game, you can delete the target, create another one, uh, and clicking here on Game, you can rename this for maybe, in our case, Action RPG Main Release, and you can like, create other ones, Action RPG DLC 1, Extra Pack, or something like that. Right, uh, a few things that you have to be aware, right? Uh, you have to be aware of the loading uh, policy. This pretty much uh, tells you uh, where, uh, the kind of localization content that you're making, or of course, when it necess when it's, apps it's going to be loaded when you run uh, your project. Uh, yeah, uh, this is something very interesting. Uh, this is the exact same system that we used to translate to localize the engine okay right so everything every text that you see okay not every text but the majority of the text of the content that you're seeing in the engine that has text and sometimes even images assets is localized through this system so it's it's, it's i mean this is a proof that we actually use this mm -hmm. internally uh so keep in mind that you can literally you can actually localize the editor using this i do not recommend that but you can you can, if you want to take a look, a deeper look at it, you can. Uh, okay, a few things that we need to discuss, right? Um, uh, I, I would recommend a lot that uh, right, right after this stream, or maybe before taking, before watching this stream, I would recommend a lot of people take a look at the or localization docs uh, that we have and the documentation. That's a great, great job that we did there. Uh, to understand a little bit more about uh, the concepts of the uh, of what localization really means, localization and the differences between localization, internationalization, we have all of those very detailed in our docs. We're not going too deep uh, on that, but we're going co we're going to cover very quickly a little bit about cultures, uh, and and a culture is basically. Uh, it's, it's, it's this thing that contains uh, information uh, for internationalization for a particular place, particular locale, that's how we call it, right? It's usually composed, I mean, it's named, uh, and you probably, I mean, if you ever worked with translation ever, it, it, you have seen that before. It's uh, composed of three uh, hyphen separated uh, parts. Uh, it's usually a two letter like uh, PT for Portuguese or EN for English. Uh, sometimes a four uh, optional, optional uh, letter script code and uh, also an optional letter uh, country code. Uh, uh, so for the uh, English language, uh, the localization code for the United States will be EN uh, dash hyphen US for Brazilian Portuguese is PT uh, dash BR. And this code is mostly used because uh, someone can, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Brazilian uh, and I'm playing a game, but this game was only translated into Portuguese from Portugal, right? Mm -hmm. So Portuguese from Portugal will be PT slash probably PT, PT. Uh, but then if I'm playing this game from Brazil, the operating system is going to detect that I'm playing in a Brazilian language environment and gonna ask, it's going to ask the game, so, hey, what is the language that I should pick? Uh, and then it will try to find in the list of languages that the game was translated. And if it can't find PT-BR, it will try to get the first language that it finds 
that has the PT, okay. anything before the, the first iPhone. So it will fall back to the Portuguese uh, from Portugal. Uh, and that's the same with English and uh, any any languages, any cultures that you try. So this is very briefly something that it's it's interesting to understand. And it's, it is literally an ISO standard uh, that you have to follow. Uh, the very basic component of when you're speaking about uh, localization is, of course, uh, text, mm -hmm. right? When you need to translate the sentences, the words, uh, anything that you need to, that need to be read uh, in the game. And the, the, the very basic property that we use for that is the f-text uh, property. Uh, f-text is a little bit different from the strings, mm -hmm. a little bit different from the name. Uh, because it's it's made was designed to be used for text that the end user the player is going to see and that's why it comes with all that uh, um, all the functions that you can use to concatenate uh, texts create bigger sentences support for a plurals and of course the f text property is the the property that gives uh, unreal uh, the property that's able to be translated to be localized uh, in Unreal Engine, so supports live cultural switching uh, and creating uh, culture in culture invariant sources, which basically means can be can be translated, right? Good. Okay, let's start with actual uh, stuff. So here we have the localization dashboard, and uh, and this is where the magic happens, right? Across this game, we have lots of lots of text. Right. Let me show some examples. Let me show the UI. Oh no, blueprints. We've got blueprints. Let's say option screen. Right. Okay. Creators. And then, so for every text that's going to be user facing, so this is a great example. This is something that it's going to be. A, it's an F text uh, object. And uh, what you're going to see here when I click this pop up. Uh, every F text that you declare, be it on uh, Blueprint or if it will just add a text to UMG, uh, it will be automatically uh, localizable. And this, this parameter will be set to yes automatically. So what it basically does, it registers itself uh, with a key so that can be found later. Oh, every text goes, I mean, if I can be very, can I explain that very simply, every text will go to a list uh, every F text will go to a list that can be gathered by the localization system and that will be identifiable as a translatable text. Right? And how do I do that? Well, uh, it's very easy. Uh, there are two things, two ways to do that. Uh, you can gather text from packages, and by that, uh, you're getting uh, UMAP files, which is map files in the engine, mm -hmm. or U asset files, which is basically anything, any kind of assets, including blueprints and, and, and everything. Uh, but we, you, you are also able to look on text because, of course, sometimes you need to declare uh, F text variables uh, on code on mm -hmm. C++. Uh, the engine is also able to track that. Of course, that you need to use uh, some macros in your code to declare and create the IDs, the proper ID, so we can properly track. Uh, we're not going to that today, uh, but you can find, and it's very easy, very straightforward. You can find a lot of information in our documentation that we can have on the comment. Yeah, no, sorry, um, on the. I'll add it to the forum post for great. the announcement and awesome. also in the uh, description of the YouTube video. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, okay, so let's start with this. Uh, I'm going to gather only from packages. Uh, and I'm only, well, I could probably have the include path wide cards. I could probably add the entire content folder. Uh, I, I sure don't need that because this project, I know that all my texts, they live in the blueprints. We'd get blueprint folder. And probably, if I'm not mistaken, in the items folder, right? Good. So, so what the engine is going to do is going to uh, go over every asset in those folders and any folder inside it. Uh, and we'll look for F texts that are marked as and added to the list to be translated. 
Uh, and that would be pretty much it. Oh, no, yes, we need to add, uh, of course, we need to support, uh, add the list of cultures that we want to translate, right? Uh, uh, of course, that uh, as, as default, as a standard Unreal comes set up to, I mean, as the default culture to be English, mm -hmm. right? English, United States. So, uh, I do speak English, but uh, my first language is Portuguese. So, let's give it a try translating it to Portuguese. Portuguese. And then what you're going to see is that Portuguese here is the, the root of all the languages, I mean, of, of all the Portuguese, Portuguese uh, variations. And that will be just PT, right? And then Portuguese Brazil is PT dash VR. Okay. And then you find Angola, Portugal, and PT, PT. Yeah, so let's do Portuguese Brazil, because that's where I come from. And the first thing that I, I will ask you to do, or tell you to do, is that as you see, you have this small circle here. So it means that uh, Unreal is looking at this culture as the 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 native culture, the, the culture that you're going to the culture that you're going to develop your game, let's say it like that. So this is uh, uh, this is how if this is a culture that you develop your game and then all the other translations will be based on this culture. You usually don't do that because if you're using uh, international services for localization, mm -hmm. uh, English will will probably be like the, the standard language f for this. So I we still uh, click here from the small circle, and then we're going to be set setting the English to be the native culture, right? And in general, this should be it. If I click gather text, what Unreal is going to do, it's going to go over all the assets that have F text variables, parameters. It's going over everything, trying to find F text. It's done. And then it's going to show here that I have 188 words that I can translate. If I look here for, if I click on edit translations for Portuguese, you see that all those words are not translated, right? Not translated, a lot of them. Great. So, yeah, first things uh, first. Uh, uh, when you're when you're uh, working on the translating your game for the first time, uh, that's something that uh, th that's the first uh, I won't say problem, but it's the first first thing that you will find. Like I told you before, uh, any text uh, text component text widget that you add mm -hmm. to uh, UMG, it will come of course with an F text in it. That is the text that's going to be shown to the to the user, and that will automatically come as a localizable text, which means that uh, at, at the very end, it's going to be tracked by the localization assistant and it's going to be added here, right? So in the end, you're going to have a lot of stuff that sometimes you don't necessarily want to translate because this uses universal language. Uh, so the first thing that we should tackle is uh, finding uh, finding texts, finding uh, uh, labels that you don't need to translate, that or you don't want to translate, and setting them, setting the F text uh, variables as non-localizable, so they will be out of that list. They will be, uh, they will not be tracked for localization, right? And the second thing is. Uh, usually when you're uh, translating your game or localizing your game, you're paying for that localization mm -hmm. per, sometimes per word, sometimes per, uh, I mean, the, you're paying for the amount of effort. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't matter. Uh, and if you have stuff like, okay, a, a great example, Potion. If you, if you have your translator to, to translate Potion twice, you're going to pay twice to translate that uh, uh that word uh -huh. that's the same with like recovers 50 percent uh hp and recovers 50 percent uh uh mp i mean there are, those are very similar uh, uh sentences yeah that you can get some you, you can get if you get them more organized you can probably reduce a little bit the cost of translation in the end we're, we're talking about action rpg which is a simple project 
it's a very small project but i mean from, from an actual game that you're going to ship this this thing can uh can get a little bit out of control uh and unreal has a uh, a really good system for that we do have something that we call let me show you a string table and a string table is literally a table a place where you can store um uh, common uh, words. Uh, I, I'm using common text, but I, I want to use common words. It's a place where you can store uh, common words, uh, uh, things, texts that you may need to reuse. Stuff like uh, stuff that, uh, that you usually have in your UI, like okay, cancel, uh, back, uh, you know, delete. Okay. That kind of stuff that you don't need to translate uh, very frequently. If I take a look at this very quickly I have okay I can give you a few examples I have the souls this could pretty, pretty much be a new uh, common word so that's going to be called souls to add a new word just write a key for it and then I can write the original string in the original language in the uh, native language so I'm going to use my native language language is English I'm going to use English here right uh, let me see something else. Uh, Auto play could be back, so we're using back and cancel. Uh, yeah, back, cancel, confirm. So let's just add those as an example. Play back. Cancel. Confirm. And that should be it. Uh, it's just a, yeah, options. But I mean, in the end, it's just an it just an example. Uh, options, great, good. I will save this. Uh, I will close this down. Get back to the localization dashboard, uh, and I'm going to gather all text again. So, look at this. We have 188 mm -hmm. uh, words. So I'm going to gather the text. This number is going to increase because we have just added the new library of words, the common words that we use. So we have 193 now. Uh, so they're usually at the very end here. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to translate it here to Portuguese. So that's a new thing. Uh, I hope the keyboard oh it's not gonna work you need a special keyboard too <laughs> I see <laughs> maybe we need to put the computer in a different culture yeah well, no, we actually just need to use US international and then you have some shortcuts to okay. use the the weird <laughs> <laughs> the weird characters I had to relearn when I moved to the US oh yeah yeah sure uh, I'm sure you had to had yeah. to do the same thing yeah yeah Okay, I just translated this very common terms, but first I need to go over all of my uh, UI, all of my interface, to uh, go for each of those uh, text uh, properties and uh, set them to use that common word, set them to use the, the, the string table. Uh, so let's see the options, okay, the options screen, right? So I have back here, I have options. So this is, those are uh, words that can probably be reused. They are using a single instance of an F text here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here in string table. I'm going to pick the string table I just created. And I'm only going to link this to the option. Uh, to, yeah, to the option. And then we'll show here options on the label. Same thing for back. I'm going to go to my string table and set to back. What else we can we do? I think that we have cancel, confirm, options, controls. Sounds like a main menu. Yeah. Well, actually, I think that the HUD, let's go to the PC HUD because we have souls here. No, we don't. Sorry. Oh, okay. We can, this one is going to be. Yeah, we can just add. Sorry. 
just add health and mana. So that's going to be health. Yeah. Good. Then here, I'm going to pick my common words and set it to health and mana I'll do the same thing yeah should be good uh, okay what else then I have confirm and cancel I do have I do have guys here yeah this this screen here where I have cancel and confirm that I can show you set them to my common words and just to make it clear for you that are joining the live stream now this is I mean I'm not saying that you need to use this system to translate any uh, each of the words uh, we, we should use it carefully it's just to reduce the amount of uh, time that you're going to spend to translate mm -hmm. Uh, words or even sentences doesn't need to be words it can actually be sentences that you're going to reuse a lot in your game mm -hmm. uh, it's also good because it you, you can make sure that you're not you won't be lost in translation so <laughs> <laughs> you you can have like if you want to make sure that I want this sentence to be exactly the same yeah. every time so create a library of sentences so you make sure that it's not going to be uh, different for different parts of the game it's actually a pretty useful thing okay good uh, uh, getting back to the translation system I'm going to gather again and what you're going to see here that since I've went through a, some of my uh, with get blue and I've set them to use the common words uh, string table when I gather oops when I gather text, this number is actually will actually go down because instead of having a one instance of that uh, text uh, for every uh, oh look at that yeah yeah text file you're gonna have uh, it's going to be referencing mm -hmm. the table and you see that here you can actually see the progress of the translator here three percent three percent we're getting there. Uh, it actually can see and untranslated. Okay, uh, let's go down here to translate health. Ah. Not only are you teaching us localization in other languages, but, but you're Portuguese. also teaching us a little bit of Portuguese. Yes. Yeah. Magia. Okay. That was good. Okay. Good. Uh. Okay. What else can we do? Uh, we could probably try to play the game. Yeah. Get it in Portuguese right now. Uh, let me see if I do remember the console command for that. Uh, let me see. Culture. Nope. I know that. Well, anyway. I can do it very quickly. Uh, I'm going to. I'm going to add. I was was planning to do that. Oops, that in the end, but I can do it very quickly on in the options screen. I think it's set current culture. Yeah. There's also set current locale. Yeah, but that's a that's a blueprint or a console. Um, I believe these are actually, uh, these are functions. Okay. Yeah. Yes. No, I can do it very quickly. I can show you here. Uh, what are we gonna do? Oh, here we go. It's straight up just culture equals. And then the culture. Okay, so that's going to be culture. And then equals no space. Equals, equals and then I guess PT dash BR. BR. Oh, yeah. That is actually a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. Yes, our game is in Portuguese. It actually is not Portuguese. Not the game. If I play the game now, that's probably be going to oh. be. No, it's not. So if you if you yeah yeah <laughs> if you look at the editor now, it's in Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing. Usually, when you're testing localization or you're doing initial implementation, uh, 
if you just change the culture while playing in editor, uh, it will change the editor. Okay, so it's a good thing to maybe not do. <laughs> yeah. So what I what I prefer to do when I'm when I'm doing that when I'm I'm playing with localization, I prefer to just play as a standalone. Okay. Because that uh, I mean that even simulates a little bit better the environment that the game. It, it will automatically detect the operating system language mm -hmm. that already uh, you do that al automatically and of course it won't be you won't be you won't have to be like changing the language back okay. to to your native language in the end so oh okay so <laughs> okay i'm glad you speak portuguese and that we picked the right one there yeah okay now oh my gosh i i i, I don't use <laughs> The editor in Portuguese at all. Ah, user interface. You want to bring that over to the other screen so we can see where you're going? Okay, sure. And also more Portuguese. Yes. So you're, if you, any of you are learning Portuguese, your Portuguese teacher is going to be very happy today. Ah, okay. Linguagem? What if we switch it back? Yeah, you're so smart. I try. Culture and US. It's equal. Equals and US. Ta da! Oh, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Whew. Whew. Okay. So. How often do you work with the editor in Portuguese? Uh, never. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, let me run this. It's going to open in another monitor. I'll bring this back. Come on. Okay, it's back. Ah. So, yeah, it's not going to work. It's still in English, but... But now we can access the... Yeah, how do I... I do it like, okay. Equals PT slash br and it should work uh, did it work no hmm uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure that I mean we, we, we definitely have uh, a way to change that on the console but uh, that's and fine are you sure we assigned the the main UI with the health and mana I'm sure. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Just double checking. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's let's add this here, right? Yeah. Uh, let's do a combo box. A very simple combo box. I'm gonna add this here. Uh, and this combo box, uh, of course, if you're doing a combo box for a game, uh, this is supposed to be populated dynamically, mm -hmm. right? You're supposed to list all the languages that you do support officially, and then you can just populate that combo box with all 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 the language that you need. We're going to do that manually. I can, if we have time, I can show that how to do that okay. uh, dynamically later. But uh, I'm going to have the first one, English, US as the main language. And then we're going to have Portuguese, Brazil as the second language. We're going to have English, US as the default selected option. And then I'm going to do some padding because I think this is ugly. Compile. Save. Uh, if I play this now, oh no, yeah, I, I forgot a bit in that any code. <laughs> That's yeah. I just have nice yeah. to have something to execute when yeah, we switch it. Yeah, sure. Oh, look at that. We have errors here. Mm -hmm. So because yeah, that probably comes from another project. Yeah, let's ignore that. Uh, if I go to Do the you want to bring it over to the uh, the other monitor? Yeah, I'm. Um, Trying to uh, shift F one does not work. Okay, it's working. Oh, okay. Am I doing this? Can do uh, Windows down. I think would work as well. Uh, no, or right. It's a new monitor setup here. <laughs> it's not left and okay, right anymore. Okay, find a way. Great. This is here. Yeah, but we basically just have a, a, a pop up here that's worthless. Okay, what we're we gonna do? Uh, we're gonna get one of the change events for this guy. So on one on selection changed, right? So it's gonna create an event here, and 
we're going to use the function set culture set current culture and since we are already using the the correct denomination denomination the correct code i'll just plug this here but of course that for if you're i mean if you're working on a game you you don't want that the user mm -hmm. user facing nus or ptbr you want this to be portuguese or english mm -hmm. so you can probably like do the you do the translations or reference in between the 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 word that you're using with the right code that we need to pass to the and that should be it let me play this again i'm gonna have a hard time bringing <laughs> this to the oh no i just need to be fast uh and if i go here and select portuguese it's not working uh what am i doing right oh of course yeah Yes, there are a few things that we need to do before this can work. I'm sorry. Uh, first, I'm going to gather text one more, one more time just to make sure things are okay. Uh, and for the localization system for text to work, uh, so all this data is now stored into the project folder. I can show you right now if we do have access to this. Uh, it's stored here in the content folder and then Unreal created a localization folder with that target that we have configured mm -hmm. earlier, game, and then you're going to have lots of stuff, English, Portuguese, all of, all of your data is going to be there. But it's all text files now. So we need to compile that into a format that's going to be, that Unreal is going to use to read those texts, basically because uh, it's going to be more performance. So it okay. will, be, will be compiled into the final format that the engine will, will use during runtime just, just so things are more performance. So I'm compiling this now. And it should be done. Uh, and if I play the game now, it should just work. Let's hope. It's a good thing you know which button yes. is what they're... Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, now we have it working. So, English US, English US, Portuguese BR. We have everything ready. I don't know what is happening. But if you can see here, have Saudi, Magia, and everything in place. And it just works. This pause menu has an issue. Let me see yeah, what's the issue with it. Because this project... Yeah. Yeah. This... Yeah, because I had to sanitize the project because Action RPG, and that's a good thing that you probably want to know, Action RPG actually already have uh, the localization for Portuguese. Okay. So if you need a project that you need to use as a reference to how the localization system already works, Action RPG has a is a is a it's a very simple. It's not that complicated, but mm -hmm. it's a very simple example of how you can look at things and how I localize that for Portuguese. So I had to sanitize that before the stream, but well, now uh, that we already have, it was using uh, the string table. Now we can, you know, just use what we are using. We use common word. Uh, let me unlink to the broken one and link to the new one and use back. Uh, this one, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to unlink and link to the new one option and this one, I have no idea what it used to be. Uh, <laughs> 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 well, it's... We can figure out what the button is. We can does. figure it out yeah. later. Yeah, it's going to be yeah, something. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, OK, and that should be fixed now. Good. So we are uh, mostly ready. We should be able to start translating our text, uh, the rest of the sentences of the game. Mm -hmm. right? We already have our menu here, so we can select the language. Uh, and everything is set and working. And to be clear, we are um, when we're using the combo box and the drop down and the clicking, we're obviously calling a function yes. during runtime. But yes. the localization system, as it is, will still 
without you doing anything else, and now correct me if I'm wrong, um, will load the correct culture yes. at, right when you start the game. Yes. Well, uh, you're, it, it, it will not do that automatically for you. It definitely gives you the options to do that. Okay. So you have, I can show you, you have a few, few functions that you can do. When you start your game, I can show you all the culture that we have. We have, okay, get localized culture. So this is all the localized cultures that your game currently supports. So the same uh, list of uh, cultures that mm -hmm. you have here, that you added support to your game, uh, you will be able to access this over here. And then what you can do, uh, you can get the current culture. Okay. I don't know if this is the current culture, but let me see if this is... Uh, because you can definitely, I mean, you have functions here to get the, you have functions in Unreal to get the, the native culture. Yeah, this one. You get the native culture of the, oh no, this is a different thing. Uh, you have functions in Unreal to get the native culture of the operating system, what the operating system is using. Okay. And then you can, uh, and then you can basically try to match with the cultures that you already okay. have, that you translated your game, and then you can say that, okay, uh, uh, for this region, uh, the default culture that we're going to use is gonna be this one, right? So it tries, it, 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 you're able to try to detect uh, and to automatically set the right culture for that mm -hmm. uh, region that the game, uh, where the game is running and the computer that the game is running. Um, uh, the, uh, the engine doesn't do that uh, by itself, okay. but you can just do that in the initial initialization. Maybe in the game instance, once the, the game opens, say, okay, what are the cultures that I have? What is the culture of the operating system? What is the best one I should pick and just, just set up? Okay, so, so there is a, you actually do need to implement uh, you actually, the culture. Yeah, you actually you do need to implement okay. because in the end, it's, it's, it's really something that's up to the developers. Mm -hmm. Some, sometimes developers... They Still just, want it. Yeah, they just want to you know, let the user decide yeah. the, the language that they want to play the game. And that's nice. So you don't have to turn anything off to not have it. Oh, uh, I, 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 I've definitely had games that I had a hard time. I mean, not today because things are much better. But I mean, in the past, they were like, oh, you're in Brazil. So uh -huh. you want to, of course, you want to play this in Portuguese. I had so much work to translate that for you. And you, I mean, it's going to automatically be set to Portuguese. But I usually prefer to play it in English. And sometimes it was really hard to change it back. Okay. <laughs> so it's like, okay, I want to play it in English. No, you have to, to use the language that we gave you. So, yeah, uh, you, you don't want to make the user to, to force the user to set the operating system mm -hmm. to English just to play. No, just, uh, it, it really is up to the developer. Let the, the user uh, decide what language he wants, he wants to play the game. Okay, uh, where we were? We were about to start translating. Yes. Okay, uh, here are a few things. Uh, we do provide this interface here, right, where you can translate everything, right? It's, it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, it shows, uh, you can track what, what you want to be, what needs to be reviewed, uh, what you want it to be reviewed. You can track what, what is completed. It's great, but it's in general, this is, that's okay if you're doing like minor and small stuff, mm -hmm. uh, a small project. Uh, that's okay to use this interface. In general, professional translators uh, they use different uh, formats for for that, right? And Unreal do support that. And the main main format that the industry uses is the portable object uh, format, which is basically call it .pos file po files, uh, and uh, if you're going to use uh, a localization service provider, uh, it's probably what they, sometimes they just want a CSV file, but in general, they will ask for a .bo file because okay. this can be open in a spe special, specific localization applications that make their life much easier. Uh, we could probably do that here. I can show you. This is just, it's basically just a text file. I can just I will export a .bo file. And when we and then we can look at the structure in it here, okay, Portuguese. Yeah, it, this is basically a text file. Let me see how can I open this. 
We got a notepad. There's yeah, a studio. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it was just, that was bad. Uh, so yeah, so you can start to see here uh, uh, the strings, right? The message ID is the original string. That's the number that we need to use to to know what we're actually translating. Mm -hmm. It has some comments to show you what is the asset that you are translating. This usually uh, that's useful for us, but sometimes not very useful for the localization. Uh, this this was made to be open in a different application, uh, different kinds of applications that are made for that, tailored for for translation and localization, right? So just to show you that we do support that, and if you need, uh, you can use that. Um, but yeah, let's let's do uh, let's do some. Uh, let's do another round of localization here. Uh, so yeah, let's do. Let's just go over some of the text. Uh, let's say this. Let's translate that. Well, this is one. Okay, uh, this is w w one that is one of the common words right. that we didn't change, we didn't catch. This is here in WB equipment. Okay. Ah. WB equipment, uh, C whatever. So uh, this is the thing that you you're going to do that you're going to do a lot. So you go, need to go that. So here we have WB equip equipment, and then we'll need to set this to be you use our common words. Set it to back, compile, save, and then when we get back to the, our dashboard and we gather text again. We're going to see so it's important every time you make a change um, yes. regarding what your ftext um, variables are loading, you're going to have to gather text again. Yes, yes, just to make sure. Mm -hmm. So we probably have one less word here. Oh, we translated. We're 88% now. Oh, look at that. Progress. Progress. Right. OK, and then you do more, like, again, souls, the points label, whatever. Get back to the points label. Uh, UMG widget, where it is, points label. And the word source needs to be pointed to our thing. Right? Yeah, okay, good. And same thing again. So it, it, it becomes a little bit of kind of a homework mm -hmm. thing, but in the end, I mean, as as the game grows, uh, it's a uh, as the game grows bigger and bigger and bigger. It becomes, I mean, uh, the amount of money that you can, uh, the cost that you can reduce with that, it's pretty, pretty impressive. Uh, and here we have some examples. Okay, let me, let me translate just just the the skills, right? So we can have it, have it pretty uh, edges of that. How do I translate that? Oh gosh. I should not be. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I promise, it's going to be very fast. Uh, whoever created. I think we've all learned that Fogo means fire. Yeah. Yeah. We. we, we yeah. We. Uh, Whoever created the skill names was not very creative. Fiery edges. Yeah, it was me. <laughs> so here's a good example of something that we can, we should create a, a new. Common word for yeah, mm -hmm. but yeah, of course I I'm sure that you at home when you're doing the translation for your project you're gonna be much more organized uh, than we are. Yeah, okay, we have lots of stuff. Uh, yeah, potion over there, skill, 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 skill. Okay, here we're using this guy. Uh, yeah, but you already got you understood that. Uh, the concept of it, 
uh, there's another thing I want to come back. So you see here we have some numbers, uh, at least four numbers. But those are things that you usually will not translate because those are labels that are going to be uh, dynamically filled by the game mm -hmm. code. So plus five uh, health, I mean, that that's dynamically. It's here because uh, we needed to use, when we were designing the UI, we needed to have, I mean, some text for A reference. Default, yeah. yeah. To, so uh, I mentioned that again uh, before, but I'm doing that again. So this is in the HUD. This is in the HUD too. This is equipment slots, and this is points label. So yeah, so let's go to the HUD. And now you're going to select these to be not localized. Not is that correct? Not localized, yes, because we don't need them. So once I do that, uh, the engine will never need to uh, care them, to be aware of them for translation, mm -hmm. right? Uh, okay, what else was uh, equipment slot? Let me compile and save. This should be here in the inventory folder, equipment slot, probably this text here. So it doesn't need to be ever translated. Save. And the other one was points label. Where is points label? Uh, here. OK. So this guy. No. Nope. Yeah. So again, uh, just click gather text, wait. Twenty-one percent. Twenty-one percent. Look at us. Let me compile the translations. Okay, and let me play the game again, and then we're gonna have more things translate. How many times do you think you've launched the action RPG? Oh, that's, that's more than a <laughs> for sure. Okay, so let's go to the options menu. Something. <laughs> And then, yes, we have most of the stuff translated. Saudi, Magia, Automatico uh -huh. over there. Probably some of the, yeah, some of the skills were translated, Bola di Fogo, whatever. Some of the weapons. Yeah, Spada do Cavaleiro here, it's translated. Yeah, some of the potions. So, of course, that we won't like spend all the time translating all the words, but. Uh, yeah, I'm not using some of the special characters that the uh, Portuguese language require, uh, like the accents and something, because mm -hmm. just because we haven't configured the keyboard to be US international, so I could use the shortcuts for that. But yes, we do support uh, that. And Unreal, this is a subject that we're going to, we're going to get uh, an access. Unreal do support uh, not only text localization, but asset localization. And we may think, OK, that's really weird why, why you would support asset localization. Yes, because sometimes for uh, Action RPG is a great example. Like the, the logo of Action RPG contains text and letters. Mm -hmm. And let's say you went to, you're localizing your game to Korean or Japanese. Uh, you want to localize the logo so it's going to use their alphabet. Uh, it's going to be like, it's going to look different. So and, and in the end, it's it's an image, right? It's a texture, mm -hmm. right? So you will need to be able to support to have to load a different texture uh, for that specific culture. Uh, but other times, it's it's just because you have content in your game that's sensitive to 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 a culture, to a country, mm -hmm. to a specific place. So let's say uh, there are some countries where you're not able to depict uh, blood. So let's say you have a blood particle, mm -hmm. uh, then you can localize that blood particle uh, to be like a green uh, particle instead of red. Yeah. Uh, you can like flow uh, green particles. So just bec it's just in that uh, given country, given place, it loads a different particle file and a different texture file uh, because that's content sensitive for them. And of course, that goes to uh, textures that you use in the game, mm -hmm. uh, animations, and even entirely, I mean, it, it, even characters. Uh, uh, skeletal meshes can be translated. Okay. So you may need to use that. Uh, I'm not going very crazy on that. I just want you uh, to use the logo uh, example. Yeah. So let's say we want to have a different logo for Brazil. Uh, I hope that. 
Photoshop. So yeah, those are the logo files that we use for the main menu and the loading screen. And it's as straightforward as you can expect. You just right click the, the, the asset, you go here to asset localization, and you just what you're just gonna do is create a localized asset. So I'm going to create a localized asset to be Portuguese, and the engine does everything for you. I can just go here. Uh, I can export this file and do changes to it. Uh, if we have time, uh, let's see. Do we have time? We have a little bit of time, yeah. Okay, so let me export this. Let's click the asset actions, export. Uh, it's going to be here. Yeah, I'm going to use the same name. I'm going to open this here. I'm going to open this in Photoshop, right? I should probably pick the other one because this Photoshop is weird. Okay, what? <laughs> okay, uh, yeah. Do I have the layers? Layers. How do I close? Yeah, thank you. Paul is preparing <laughs> the, in the yeah. interface. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do, you want, do you want to bring it down? Oh, sure, yes. Can, can we do it? Sure, right? No, I'm, I'm not going to do anything crazy here. I'm just going to get the transparent part of it, and then I'm going to change this guy to be um, more Brazilian. That should be it. Uh, how do I do something to be more Brazilian? <laughs> uh, you add lots of colors. Yeah, that's it. Okay, does it look very Brazilian? Um, that's up to you to decide. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say you have more experience with Brazil than I do. Okay, uh, and then, yeah, let's just, yeah, I'm not sure I trust this thing, but let's just, yeah, let's just do this. And I'm going to, yeah, that will do. Uh, I'm going to export this guy. Uh, quick export this PNG. Oh, that's nice. So it's probably in the folder. No, it's not. Yeah, so I have a PNG file here with my new very Brazilian looking logo. Uh, then I get back to the engine. And then what, I, what I'm going to do, I'm going to change the the file it's pointing i could probably just override that file but that would be but this is a nice way actually yeah. and if, if you don't know about um that you can just sort of point to a different so that this u asset is pointing now yeah. to a different source file yes exactly and you see okay that's actually a really interesting good point uh remember that the original file lives here in in the folder content slash ui mm -hmm. right so what uh, Rio Engine made for you, it automatically created this w this folder L10N mm -hmm. or Lion, if you want to, and then it automatically created the code that I wanted to use for that localization. Okay. And then it creates the folder structure that we originally use in the the project. So if it, if it this was a texture that we were here like a UI slash texture. Unreal will automatically create that same folder structure inside the Portuguese Brazil okay. uh, language folder. So just to keep things organized. Can there be an issue there if you were to move the uh, the English file in this case? Potentially, yes. I haven't tried that. In, I, I mean, you, sh you shouldn't because once you move it, Unreal will ask you, hey, do you want to update the references? Mm -hmm. uh, to, to those files. So it should, in general, we should automatically update that for you. Uh, but uh, of course, I would not recommend it because this probably follows a standard that will make your life much easier yeah. if you if you use this. So yeah, so we're going to pick a different file. The file we just exported, the PNG file, reimport it. Uh, yes, we have a very Brazilian logo. <laughs> and here's here's the thing that I have to have to to tell you. Uh, so if you don't set the language initially. In, in as th the moment that the game opens, uh, Unreal will load the files that, uh, I mean, the files that are set to be loaded in that culture, 
right? Uh, if you don't do that initially in the game, as the game just as the game is loading, uh, if you don't set a different language as the game is loading, uh, what is going to happen is that uh, once a texture, an asset is loaded on a memory, mm -hmm. if you change the language up for that, uh, Unreal won't be able to reload that asset automatically. So we will need to be reloaded. So you will need to ask that file asset to be reloaded again so that Unreal will load the, the actual, the proper translated file. Okay. It's complicated, but I can show you very quickly. If I go back to the main menu, oh, that's the main menu. <laughs> <laughs> okay, see, it's, it's still in English. Uh, it's compiling shaders. Let's wait for that. If I change it back to Portuguese, unfortunately, the, the logo won't be updated. Okay. Uh, you can you probably have some, uh, some function that you can go to that image file and say, hey, reload or mm -hmm. load a different image, and then we will automatically do that for you. But then if I start the game and then I get back to the main menu again, now that it's in Portuguese, All right. then it will load those files. So this is something that you need to keep in mind, right? If you're like in playing your game and say uh, you, uh, you want to change something, you want to change the language uh, of your game, but you're translating assets like textures uh, and, and whatever, uh, if you change it during gameplay, you have to be aware that you will need to uh, refresh those assets that you loaded because um, Unreal will only pick the translated files once you reload those assets mm -hmm. once as 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 it needs. So this is something that needs to be uh, you need to be aware, right? Uh, there are other stuff that we could probably mention uh, about the uh, localization. I was about to mention that is that yes, we do support uh, the the you know the the, the, the alphabets the the, the fonts. Uh, that we use in, in, in the Western world, but of course that uh, Unreal is also able to localize fonts, mm -hmm. so you can you can have like fonts for Chinese language, Japanese, Korean, and any kind of uh, different sets of uh, characters that you need uh, for your game. We also have a very very uh, complex uh, dialogue uh, localization system. Uh, in general, you could probably use the asset system uh, for uh, the sorry asset localization system to localize a dialogue because in the end it's just an audio file and mm -hmm. in the end it's, it will become an asset. But uh, even though that will be okay, Unreal has another layer of complexity, especially for dialogue. Uh, so we will take care of you. Let's say if you need to have. Uh, different levels of uh, how can I say li little level of, uh, levels of cate categorization for okay I, I want a version of the game that doesn't have like these words like that, that okay. it's like that can be played for kids so the dialogue system in Unreal is powerful to that level we, we, I, I don't want to get into much detail of that because that goes a little bit deep mm -hmm. but if you're doing dialogue simple dialogue the localization system for you should work fine but if you need that kind of complex complexity, yes, Unreal Engine already provides a system that's pretty complex. And that's for like uh, age selection or yeah, for stuff like for age selection, and even for stuff like uh, micro regions where the game is running. That I mean, this word may be very offensive, mm -hmm. but you still want to allow the player to be able to. No, I don't want any kind of. Uh, uh, changes that want to play the original content. So, like a profanity filter. Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's uh, all that all that I say could be. Yeah. <laughs> Is it? Um, do we have the documented? Oh yes. Uh, everything that I mentioned, and even uh, uh, everything that I mentioned in the stream, you have like it, it's very well documented. Uh, it's going to be in the stream. Yeah, we'll drop it in the form announcement yeah, post. Form announcement, and also if you're looking to uh, localize fonts, if you need to have localized fonts for your project, and if you need to have localized, if you if you're going to do complex dialogue for a game and you need to have those uh, features, uh, yes, it's pretty well documented. You can find it on the forum post. That you're going to Perfect. Yeah, I'll make sure to put it in there. Yeah, and that should be it. 
That's um, very informative. Not yeah. only do we know um, how to replace assets in text, but we also learned a little bit of Portuguese. Yeah. I don't think I'll ever <laughs> forget that when it's Fogo, <laughs> when it's fire. Yeah, it's lot, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> lots of fire, lots of Fogo. So if, if I'm, in, I'm in Brazil, or uh, it sounds like it's a kind of word that might be uh, the same across all Portuguese languages. Yeah. Is that, is that correct? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so if, some, if I'm in a Portuguese-speaking country and someone is running around yelling, Fogo, Fogo, then I know to... You know you have to run. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> the more you know. <laughs> the more you yeah, know. the more you know. Yes. That's good. Um, so you might have noticed today we are actually pre-recording the stream, and so we won't be taking any questions live from chat. Uh, but you're more than welcome to go ahead and post your questions on the forum thread, uh, and I'll make sure that we uh, head back there, and, and um, I'll have Paulo try to help out and answer some of the questions. So uh, that link will be in the YouTube description, um, and it's the uh, you know to the events forum where we announce all the live streams. Um, we'll make sure that we'll follow up and. Uh, see if there are any questions, anything that might have been unclear throughout the stream. But all in all, it looks pretty straightforward. As long as you remember, gather text c or change translation, yes. gather, gather text, compile text, reload. Yes, uh, and make sure to use to have your library of common words of you know, you, to set up your string, tra string table properly. Mm -hmm. So not only you can reduce translation costs if you need to translate this with a third party, but it also actually also helps keep your game organized, right? To do not like misspell the word, confirm the back, cancel right. the kind of stuff that you 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 use a lot in your games. Why you need to write that? I mean, to repeat uh, writing that all the time when you can have a library of words uh, that make sure that you won't misspell any of these important sentences. It sounds great. Um, anything else you want to leave uh, our viewers with? Uh, no, I think I think we're all good. So what's the what's the word for uh, ice? Ice, gelo. Gelo. All right. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. You need it. You need it. The counterbalance. Yeah. You know? And if you guy, if any of you need to contact me directly, uh, you can find me on Twitter too. Unre yeah. Uh, yes. Unreal Paulo. Uh, any developers in the Latin America and in Brazil uh, can also, if you need to reach me directly. Of course, we have the indie indies mm -hmm. at Unreal uh, dot Unreal Engine dot com, uh, but you can also reach me directly over Twitter. So feel free to get in touch. That sounds good. And as always, if you're interested in meeting occasional evangelists out, um, you can go ahead and go to unrelenting.com slash user dash groups, where you'll see a list of um, all of the user groups that we have going on in the world. You can go ahead and go to their meetup page and see when the next meetup will be. Um, and I do believe you visit some of them in yeah. Brazil. Yeah. Um, and the rest goes for, for, for the rest of the world. Um, and it's kind of, a, you know, Fun part doing a little bit of localization, considering how global the our suite of tools are, and yeah. um, and and it's important, right? You can increase the size of your potential market by localizing Absolutely. your game, and so balancing Absolutely. the yeah. the the cost, also making it more accessible, right? Because yeah. not everyone speaks English. Yeah, and the best part of it is that uh, when you use uh, how can I say a professional grade engine like Unreal Engine, uh, this is the tools that we use to to to, to I mean to have. Fortnite translated in Portuguese, mm -hmm. right? So, and, and Fortnite is a world-class product. We we need a very good uh, system to allow us to do what we do. So, what what we're giving what we're giving developers is a world-class tool that uh, in, for free that you you don't need to buy any third-party plugin and anything else from uh, anywhere else from the marketplace or wherever. It's built into the engine. You just need to use it and it already supports all the standards that uh, that you need uh, and, 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 and you know this in, in general this is the kind of stuff that Unreal has uh, comparing to the competition mm -hmm. right uh, it already gives you these kind of tools that will will allow you to ship your game right that's the, the things that we we'll, that, that the developer I mean the developers that are working on it I mean working seriously on games needs to ship their games right for sure that's great. A um, few other points. If you heard something throughout the stream that you don't really remember when it, we were talking about it, um, after a couple of days of the stream goes up, um, we actually transcribe and we don't translate, we don't localize uh, the streams, unfortunately. Not but we yet. do, we do, no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we do transcribe them, and that transcript gets uploaded. Um, and there's a link in the YouTube description. Uh, you can go ahead and control F that and search for keywords, and you'll see the timestamp, which allows you to go to that section of the stream. And if there was something specific that you remember, maybe you were doing something else while you were watching the stream, and oh, oh I remember they talked about that. And that way you can search for it. And, 
uh, possibly have a little e bit of easier time to find it. Uh, make sure you follow us on social media. That's where we do all the updates on what streams are coming. Uh, I actually go ahead and post the entire stream schedule on Twitch. And so in the channel description, if you scroll down a little bit, you can actually see the upcoming and the past streams. And there's also a link to the full YouTube playlist for Inside Unreal, where you can go ahead and watch the streams that we do every week. Okay. Um, and I think with that said, thanks, Paula, for coming. Uh, uh, thanks yeah. for it was, me. it was definitely a little bit of a shoehorn. Let's, yeah, let's yeah. go ahead and make sure Paula gets in here since you're here at HQ. Uh, yeah. And so I appreciate you taking the time to prepare the presentation for us and share a little bit about uh, yeah. how to do localization. I uh, hope to have you back at some point sure. this year. Yeah. If not, I know I'll see you at GDC probably. For sure. Yeah, yeah, that'll be the next part. All right. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Um, I hope you have a good rest of your week. And then until next time, we're going to say goodbye. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.